topic tonight is around protecting your mental health. Uh, we know as black men that for lack of a better term, there's an onslaught on our mental health. Would everybody agree with that? Yeah. Yes, sir. And it comes from so many different areas. So it's important for us, number one, to acknowledge it, but then number two, to have some really good dialogue about it, as well as maybe some takeaways. So that's what we're gonna do with this panel of experts that we have. So if you all could just give a quick introduction, we're gonna say like maybe 90 second introduction of who you are, what you do in the space of mental health, and then we'll, um, we'll get into some, some Q&A and we'll take it out to the, to the audience as well. I am a counseling psychologist in private practice. I hang out in the, in the, in, in the grassroots organization. My number one priority is twofold. Uh, I'm here to educate black men on mental health and emotional wellness and how they interact. And I'm also here to dispel a lot of misinformation surrounding mental health, specifically as it relates to black men. So I appreciate y'all. Yes, sir. Good evening, man. Good evening, man. Thank you, thank you. I'm here to motivate. I call myself a motivational conversationalist. Because I'm Kenneth Reddick, um, I'm a 25-year pharmaceutical sales representative, but I have the Brothers Brunch Foundation. And it's not a time to eat, but be fed mental health and self-care awareness. So it's a nonprofit for black men for us to get together and have conversations. So the good thing about being connected to the Black Man Lab at this present time is for those that may just need a non-official support group, just to talk to other brothers about what we're doing around mental health and self-care, the Brothers Brunch Foundation is the place to be. We do things like holiday relaxations, fishing fellowship, hiking, healing, uh, rented out the epicenter bowling alley and had 25 black men come out and uh, have breakfast and bowl. And guess what? Everything is always free. I run it truly as a nonprofit because I have a testimony and my higher power, who I call God, Bless me, and I want to turn that blessing around. So you all will hear more about different things as we speak about my journey. I've lived it. I'm not a professional counselor or anything. I speak from my lived experiences, and that's what we have conversations. That's why some of these brothers who came, they've been a part of the Brothers Brunch. And if I tell them, hey, come on down, they know that, hey, it's going to be some real talk. So thank you. Yeah, um, happy to be here. My name is Chris James. Uh, I am a certified anger manager specialist uh, and a uh, mental health first aid instructor. I'm also the chairman of health and wellness for the Atlanta Black Chambers. Um, I run a program statewide called Black Boys Better, where we provide mental health education uh, across five counties across the state of Georgia. Uh, this year we were funded by the Department of Behavioral Health. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to be in this space. I look forward to connecting uh, with the black men in this space. Uh, and, I'm, uh, and also, coincidentally, uh, I actually got a documentary coming out called Bro That's Gay, A Conversation Defining Masculinity, uh, and it's starring uh, my good friend, Dr. Curtis Jasper right here. So, uh, so <laughs> didn't even know he was gonna be here tonight. So super excited to be here. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm from where you from? We from uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, man. Uh, you know, <laughs> hey, don't be disrespectful. It's the safe space. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Good evening, everyone. My name is Gamel Deweese. I'm from New York City. I moved down here in 2008. Um, I am a certified egg management specialist, uh, personality disorder specialist, child play specialist and a couple other things as well. My company is The Helping Hand Travels, LLC. I do behavior modification. I work with children and adults re-entry programs as well. Um, after this thing, if you want to get with me, just let me know. You can scan my code. When anybody need any kind of help, let me know and I'll be there. Thank you. Sure. Sure. How everybody doing? Well, um, I'm a survivor of suicidal, um, not necessarily thoughts, but had a gun to my head. I had been charged with murder. Um, I got convicted for a murder that I didn't commit and spent 10 years in prison, um, depressed 
for about four years, I overcame it through my faith in God and my mission. Um, now, I'm Dr. Barber. I service the black males that are fatherless in 13 schools. I'm um, an advocate for voter registration for formerly incarcerated people. There's 450,000 of us in Georgia that have been convicted of a felony that don't know they have the right to vote. And I advocate for them as well so we can get a fair shot at housing, a fair shot at parenting, a fair shot at earning livable wages. I'm Dr. Barber, pleasure to be here. What do you all think is the most um, important thing for brothers to know about their mental health, whether that is um, a practice or some support or uh, a resource? Like what, what, what is the one thing y'all want, you know, if, if brothers walk out of here and don't remember none of our names, you want to give them one piece to consider um, both for themselves and for brothers that are in their lives? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, brother. Uh, what shows up for me right now, uh, there's, there's a bunch of things, right? When it comes to mental health, specifically for black males, I've been working with black males for 30 years. I started off as a classroom teacher in Chicago and I finished down here as a principal in Fulton County Schools. So I've had the privilege of walking the journey with uh, black males from you know elementary on up to and there's a direct correlation to those black males who have been referred for special ed services in elementary school and being highly impacted as adults in the mental health space, right? Uh, most of them have been labeled and they have lived into the labeling even as adults. My own journey, I won't waste time. There's a TED talk that I did a couple years ago and it kind of goes into my story and my mental health journey as an adult at around 39 or 40 years old. I say that to say that you are mentally well. You will become mentally exhausted. You will need tools to strengthen your mind and your body. You are clueless, generally speaking, with all due respect, about how emotions work. Let me say that again, you are clueless. You have not been taught on how emotions work in your body. And when you don't understand how emotions work in your body, it puts a greater demand on your mind. Y'all see where I'm going with this, right? So there's a colonized approach to what mental health is. There's a specific black mental health approach that I would be remiss if I didn't go into. And that's specifically for black African people, right? There's an energy component to this, right? Emotion is just energy. And when you know how they reside in your body, because everything that happened to you stays in your body, Right? And the most stuff you got in there that you didn't finish processing, it will tug on your mind. Right? But you know who got a space for you? Hear me clearly. They have indoctrinated black women into the medical industrial complex. Right? There is a movement, if you're not careful, on adding black men to the medical industrial complex through a colonized approach to mental health. You follow me, right? And so, it's, it, it, so, so what I'm saying is I'm, I, I want to give you sort of the underbelly of how this works. There's an educational piece that I know you'll get because I'm getting it. And I say I'm getting it even as a trained professional because the journey doesn't stop. You'll be on a healing journey of recovery for your entire life. For one reason, you were born into a system that was designed to oppress you, right? And it'll come out in different ways, whether it's through your employment or your incarceration or through your or job. It will come out. Please understand what we're doing now in the mental health space. That's my approach. Appreciate that, Doc. Um, you know, I kind of I figured out this little algorithm of five things to remember when it comes to mental health. Because we're not talking about mental illness, and that's one thing we have to separate. Because a lot of times when we hear the word mental health, you say, I don't have no problem. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about taking care of your mental health. You do everything else. So here's five things. Number one, sleep. You got to get your rest. I was burning at both ends of the candle. Was an alcoholic for 30 years. And now I'm 27 months sober. 
and now I can sleep. But thank you, thank you. Number two is breathe. Just like we were doing at the beginning. I told my son the other night, he was upset, and I said, just breathe, son, and he started breathing. And then he calmed down. We have to do that with ourselves and be intentional about it, okay? Number three is meditation, okay? And even if you don't take time to meditate, meditate, turn on the meditation frequency at night and just let your mind relax. You wonder why you can't sleep. You say, oh, I read or oh, I watch something to go to sleep. Your mind is still going. And your mind cannot rest. So it's almost like you're not getting the first one because the third one, you're not taking that time to meditate. And you can do that at night. You know, you don't have to. I know some people think you got to sit somewhere. You got to do this. You, you can meditate however you want to. But take that time to do it because another thing I always say is that when you listen to your spirit through meditation and stop trying to figure out everything in your mind, then that's when we have less stress. Because we, we, we find out what our purpose is. And one of the things I say that's big for me, and somebody told me the other day, yeah, you keep saying that, and I'm going to keep saying it. My purpose is my peace. When we listen to our spirit and we find out what our purpose is, our lives can be more peaceful because no matter what may come your way, you're not going to let it disrupt, disrupt your peace because it's not a part of your purpose. Number four is exercise and activity. When I say exercise and activity, it doesn't mean go to the gym. It means doing some type of self-care. I say every, every person needs to give themselves a woo-saw moment each week. That could be massage, acupuncture, walking the mountain like I did yesterday with another group, whatever it is. But take that time for exercise or activity for yourself to truly remove yourself to relax. I tell people even they go to the gym. If the gym is stressful and you're trying to do too much, that's... That's not your activity for your relaxation. But I like to get that anger. That's to get your anger out. That's, that's not what we're talking about. So be intentional about doing some type of exercise like yoga. You know, I'm big, I'm, I'm big on yoga. You know, so those are the things. And number five, therapy. Where's Trey? Is Trey back there by you? Hey, Trey. Where do you go on Sundays? Who you go see? And who is Mr. Leo? Okay, seven years old, proactively into therapy. And you see, he's proud to say it. We have to change that mindset. Those intergenerational traumas that we keep passing on through parenting that nobody can't tell our kids what to do. I know what's best, this or that or whatever. Not my child, no. I'm 50 years old. How am I supposed to know a seven-year-old how to truly navigate him in the world that he's growing up in? By the time he graduates, I'm 61. He has a black male therapist that he loves to go to. He asked me, Daddy, can I go every week? No, you can only go every two weeks right now, son. <laughs> but, but I've changed that perception in his mind. So even if something happens in the future, he's already been groomed. But because he has that therapist outlet, and I was talking to some fourth graders, and I said, I'm sure you tell your mom and daddy everything, right? They say, no. I say, well, that's where you have a therapist when they don't have another outlet. Use our benefits. Our benefits are the benefit. If you got insurance, you can get acupuncture, therapy, physical therapy, chiropractor, and even find a massage that does a super bill and get it reimbursed through your insurance. But we have to know our resources. So if y'all, like I say, those five things, I hope you remember them. Uh, this is Dr. Walter Young. Y'all in the... Thank you. Thank you. I would really like to thank the Black Business Lab for all of the work that you... The, the young people that you have reached and the work that you're doing, this is probably, probably about one of the best programs we have in the YMCA, citywide. And I want you all, as Dr. King said, keep on keeping on. And I'll come up. All right. 
I'll come in and sit down with you and pray with you sometimes. And thank you very much. Man, so the first thing that comes up for me as it relates to giving you something to go home with uh, is forgive. Everybody say forgive. Forgive. All right. And, and what I mean by that is so, so what the basic definition of forgiveness, right? Forgive is to let go of anger or hate towards someone or something that you believe has wrong, did wrongdoing towards you, right? So forgive, right? And, and I want to give some, some specific examples of what I mean by that. What happens with black men a lot and black boys, we find ourselves becoming angry and hateful towards the event, towards the event that happened, the thing that happened. For example, my mom's died two years ago. I found myself angry, not at her, but at the event that it happened, right? I found myself angry at that. When I was 16, both of my brothers went to prison for 25 and 40 years. I found myself angry and mad and hateful at the event. For a long time, for years, I used to use the language, my brothers left me. And that became my narrative. That became my story. I ruminated it. I looped it around over and over again, and that became my truth. And that became depression for me, because it, it sat with me for a long time, right? So what I give to you, black men, is number one, forgive. All right? Everybody say forgive one more time. Forgive. And, then, and then lastly, I'll say this, and I'll pass it to my big brother right here, is heal. And what does it mean to heal, right? Again, the word heal derives from the word ha'el, H-A-E-L. The word ha'el derives from the word how, H-A-L, the state of being how is the state of being whole, right? So if you are not healed from whatever it is you need to heal from, you are not whole. You are operating as fragments of who you're supposed to be. Right? So it's no wonder why you show up in relationships that's not your best self. It's no wonder why you're not walking around as your healthiest self, a.k.a. 90 years old, able to, because some of us, 25, and can't do what he's doing. And it's not because we don't want to, but what's keeping us from being able to get to that highest version of ourselves is the fact that we have not done the work to heal, to become whole. So when you do that, I promise you, you'll become the best version of yourself. This is what I do with my guys coming through the door. As he said, uh, I like to do the breathing treatment. I do the chair yoga. I do the, um, the, the mental forgiveness to yourself. We go through that before we do anything else. Because as it says, forgive yourself first. As Michael Jackson said, the man in the mirror. Because whatever happens is on you. So my thing is, one, recognize that you have a problem. When you recognize you have a problem, get you a support team whether it's your friend, your mother, or somebody that's, that's close to you that you can respond to, and they can respond to you right away. Get yourself a support team. Second is, when you're going through what you're going through, do what we do the, to the computer. Cut it off, reboot, and come back on. Stop whatever you're doing and reboot, like we do the computer. Also, recognize, a lot of people don't even recognize what mental health is, as Dr. Chris says. We go through things on a daily basis, but we go through psychosis and we don't even know we're going through it because we were never taught. So understanding what mental health is, you have to know, you have to know that. But what I want you to remember is stop, reboot, do the breathing exercises, do the chair yoga, do the forgiveness to yourself, and once you start doing that, you start feeling better about yourself. I can go to it later on, but we're going to stop right there of what I want you to remember. We all need an accountability partner. When I got to prison, I realized that um, I wasn't who they said I was. I read my first book in prison. I had a full scholarship to Georgia Southern. So that's just how much I know about myself. I ended up writing a book. It's out on Amazon now. But the thing about, about that time that you have to yourself, you find out who you are not. And so many brothers are operating in dysfunctional environments because that's how we function. That's our norm. We don't, we don't know that violence is dysfunctional. We was raised around it in our home, in our community. And the, the therapy, I went to counseling for the first time at 42 when I realized I had father issues. And it was a problem with me knowing that I'm so good on this football field, everybody getting a hug from their dad, and I wasn't getting one. And that caused me anger, and I was mad at the act of not having a dad. And becoming 42 years old and able to express that to the youth and still be masculine, still be vulnerable, and still be that leader and still be that alpha male by leadership, not just by words. 
and going into these schools with a, with a felony on my record and being able to go in during the school hours and, and these kids get accreditation for coming in my leadership program. So for, by me going to admit that my check engine light was on was just like me saving my car from getting the timing chain. And we know we can reset that check engine light, but we know the problem still is this. Mm. Us as men, we got to pay attention and go get the proper help when our check engine light come on as men. Your stool got blood in it, your urine dark, your eyes yellow. We know the signs. Bad breath, all of those are signs that something your check engine's light on. We got to pay more attention to each other as a, as a group of brothers and let my brother know when I see something wrong the right way and not on the ground, but pull them to the side. And that's the love that I received in prison from other big dogs, OGs, real men that stood on real business. And I didn't have that in my community. Everybody was giving me the dope, give me the pack, play ball, get you some women. That's the definition of a man and from where I'm from. So now I had to unlearn everything that I was taught. And that will make me better father, soon to be husband and mentor by me accepting my chick getting his light was on. Uh, question for the, the youth. It's going into the summer. What age would you say is a good time to start your mental health development and what are the practice for, let's just say, a 13-year-old or younger to kind of start practicing? I don't think it's ever really too, too early. Because once, especially once they hit school. Because once they hit school, you know, that's when they start to have more interactions, more feelings, more problems, more stress, because you got to think that they're human too. So when you get to that work and they getting frustrated and stuff, that's stress on them. If it's something that they don't understand about you. You know, I want my son to grow up, as we say, we want our kids to have the best opportunity. But we haven't given our kids the best opportunity because we haven't allowed them to expand their mental health. He goes to sleep at night listening to the meditation music so he can rest his mind. You know, he's gone to yoga with, with the therapy group and those sorts of things. So it's never too early. You know, so I'd say, honestly, you know, it's almost sometimes too late. And that's what I'm trying to present, prevent and speak to the men is that it's, it's not too late for us to start but we got to make sure we get our kids started early on. So, yeah, so 13, definitely. I mean, you know, and, and, and reach out, you know what I'm saying? Because I know that, uh, you know, they have different groups of brothers that are doing different things around that. And But, yeah, definitely, like I say, I, I start them at 7. And you see how he is. You know, you don't want to wait till they hear about something and then they feel as though they don't want to because, no, I don't want to do that. So, yeah, so start as early as you can. He, he's been going since he was six. Yeah. How do you all feel about or think about us actually getting physical examinations, like going to the doctors? Because I think, like, that's more important first before even considering mental health. So I just want to get your idea. I know people talk about um, holistic doctors and things of that nature. So it goes both ways. And, and, and you can start where you feel comfortable with, but you must do too. Like, when we have a person that have a uh, dual diagnosis, we got to work on both at the same time. You can't work on one and hope the other one will stop until you get through the other one. You have to attack them both at the same time. To appreciate uh, the presentation y'all gave to us, that it's real life, and that's what we need. Um, I want to know, how do we deal with these policies, governmental policies, that are meant and designed to emasculate us? And sometimes, what brother mentioned about uh, the one-time event, Sometimes we can get over that, but there's little things that piss us off every day in traffic, uh, somebody saying something, one of your relatives that builds up along the way. And when you got all of that combined and with these policies that, mess, that are meant to emasculate us, then how do we, you know, siphon through all of that? It starts at the local level with the voters. And when we take over the local election in our community, we run our city and we take it from there. And we put the laws in office and the people in the seats who we can call just like the white boys. They have been had the mayor and the sheriff number. I just got it. So that's what we make the difference in our community at the poll. It does matter. And for you, as you're saying, things build up over the time. As I think I just stated earlier, stop. When you get to that point, you get frustrated in traffic, turn the radio off, stop. If you get frustrated, somebody saying something to you, apologize to them and walk away. There's things you can do to de-escalate yourself, not them. 
because you can only manage yourself. You can't manage anybody else. So you have to know how to, how to manage yourself before you can manage anybody else. So everything starts with you. If you get to that point and you get frustrated, like I keep my beads in my hand. I pray 25, but hey, I, it keeps me de-escalated. So I do things that I know that I like is going to help me out. So figure what you like and then do that. When you get, when you get to that point and you feel you get into a, a 10 on a meter, do what you do to, to breathing, the exercising, or just completely stop doing whatever you're doing and then restart. Like I said, like you do the computer. Push it off, turn it back on. One of, one of the misconceptions that we have of, of, about managing our emotions is, is that emotions are not designed to be managed. The only part you have to manage is your reactions to the emotions. Your emotions are messengers. They are designed to communicate with you and to you, right? And so the challenge comes when, because most of us are emotionally unfit, right? It's not as easy to stop, right? If that's the case, a lot of things would be <laughs> handled, correct? It sort of fo follows a paradigm like this. You, you become emotionally aware, right? Meaning you know what emotions are, right? Generally speaking, right? And, 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 and then you become emotionally literate. So you feel something in your body, but now you get to put a name to it. Oh, I get it. That's not anger. That's sadness, mm. right? Oh, that's not sadness. That's disappointment. Oh, that's not disappointment. That's guilt. Oh, guilt hanging on too long. I'm going into the shame category. Right? You follow me? Then we become emotionally intelligent. So we're aware. We become illiterate. Then we become intelligent. Now we got to put it all together and become emotionally fit. So oftentimes, the world is going to come for you. You already know that, right? You can't get hurt, then try to go to the gym. You can't, right? It's an uphill battle if you get out of shape and then try to work out. The goal is to be fit now. And the way to do that is to practice. Healing is a practice, ain't nowhere to go. You ain't gonna become healed. <laughs> You're just going to be healing until your final days. So get fit. I'm offering you a way to see it because oftentimes we hear this mental health healing stuff and it kind of puts a dark cloud on us, right? Because we come from in a negative place. I'm here to offer you, gentlemen, everything that they're saying is you being good to yourself. You being good to yourself. Keep in mind, the goal is to be emotionally fit so that you can stay in front of some things. I like it. Yeah, is, is there another question? I was just going to say one thing. What did I say? My purpose is my peace. If it's not aligned with your purpose, don't let it disrupt your peace. I always say it may disrupt me for the moment if it does. But if it's not aligned then why am I letting it disrupt my universe? All right, everybody, if you can repeat after me. I'm a link in this chain. I'm a link in this chain. And it won't break here. And it won't break here. I'm a link in this chain. I'm a link in this chain. And it won't break here. And it won't break here. We are links in this chain. We are links in this chain. And we won't break here. And we won't break here. Ashe. Ashe.